shepherd now art bought, he makes me down to lie. In pastures great he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, the Good morning and welcome to our service here at Trinity once again. I want to thank the Natsis family for our opening song, The Lord's My Shepherd, and must say that they truly practice social distancing. One in California, one in Tennessee, one in uh, Pennsylvania, and three in Michigan. So we truly appreciate them with their, their uh, beautiful song this morning. Because that also song illustrates the fact that that is what this Sunday is all about, looking at our Lord Jesus as our Good Shepherd. And that's the theme that we will be focusing on this morning. The service is, as we, you will find there in our worship folder as it scrolls down uh, during the service. And let's begin by singing the first hymn, Day by Day. i 
We stand for the opening invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy, Holy and, and merciful Father, Father I, I confess, confess that, that I am by nature sinful, sinful and, and that, that I have, have disobeyed you in my thoughts, thoughts words, and actions. And I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. good. For, For this, this I deserve, deserve your punishment, punishment both now and in eternity. eternity. But, but I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting, trusting in my Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We turn our attention to the word of our Lord, and our first reading this morning is found recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 to 9, and then going on in chapter 7, verse 2, and then verses 51 through 60. It is the account of really the first martyr of the church, and that is Stephen. Stephen was called to serve the Lord, and the Lord truly blessed him, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he proclaimed God's word and the glory of, of the wonderful news of Christ crucified. But he also was one who then was attacked. And because of that, he was put to death because of his faith in Christ Jesus. We read. In those days, as the number of disciples was increasing, a complaint arose from the Greek-speaking Jews against the Hebrew-speaking Jews because their riddles were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve called together the whole group of disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, carefully select from among you seven men with good reputations who are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. We will put them in charge of this service, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the entire group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Procurius, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord kept on spreading, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Also, a large group of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Some men who were from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and some from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. Stephen said, Gentlemen, brothers, and fathers, listen. You stiff-necked people, with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. You are doing just what your fathers did. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed those who prophesied the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You who received the law as transmitted by angels, but did not keep it. When they heard these things, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed up into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He said, Look, I see heaven opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they screamed at the top of their voices, covering their ears, and rushed at him with one purpose in mind. They threw him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses laid their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. 
while they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. After he said this, he fell asleep. This is God's word. At this time, we'll join in singing Psalm 23, a very familiar psalm, the beautiful psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd. Our second reading this morning is found recorded in the Apostle Peter's first letter, chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. And in these words of our Lord, Peter is bringing words of comfort to those uh, Christians in Asia Minor who were suffering persecution because of their faith. And he reminds them of what the Lord Jesus suffered. But he also reminds them that our Lord Jesus is the good shepherd who has brought us back into his flock to be his sheep through the giving of his life and the guarantee of that life through his resurrection. We read, For this is favorable. If a person endures sorrow while suffering unjustly because he is conscious of God, for what credit is it to you if you receive a beating for sinning and patiently endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it, this is favorable with God. Indeed, you were called to do this, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you would follow in his steps. He did not commit a sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself carried our sins in his body on the tree so that we would be dead to sins and alive to righteousness. By his wounds you were healed, for you were like sheep going astray. 
but you are now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is God's word. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Alleluia. Out of reverence for our gospel reading this morning, I invite you to stand as we hear the words of our Lord as found in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Glory be to you, O Lord. These words will also be the basis for our sermon. It is the account when Jesus, speaking to his disciples, reminded them that he is our good shepherd. Amen, amen, I tell you. Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the door, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens the door for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own sheep, he walks ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration in speaking to the people, but they did not understand what he was telling them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I tell you. I am the door for the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise be be to you, you, O Christ. Christ. We now join in singing our next hymn, hymn 360, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I mentioned, the words for our sermon this morning are our gospel reading there in the Gospel of John. We've heard them, so we'll not read them once again. My brothers and sisters in Christ, when you look at the various names of the National Football League and their teams, you discover that a lot of those teams have animals connected with their names. For example, you have the Atlanta Falcons, the Denver Broncos, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Seattle Seahawks, the Carolina Panthers, just to mention a few. And when you think about all those animals mentioned, what one animal is missing from the names of the teams? Sheep. Now, can you imagine having your sports team named after the sheep? The Chicago Sheep. The Detroit U's. What image would that convey? Wouldn't be a very positive one. But yet you might think, well, there are times where our teams play like sheep. And they're as timid as sheep and helpless as sheep. But still, you would not want your team named after sheep, would you? It's also interesting to note that when we try and describe certain characteristics of people, we will even associate those characteristics with animals. For example, he's as strong as an ox. She's as graceful as a swan. He's as ferocious as a, a lion. Positive images. But what word would you fill in if you used the blank and said blank as sheep? What would you say? As helpless as sheep? As dumb as sheep? Which would it be? Again, those images are not very positive because a lot of times we think of sheep, and, and rightfully so, as being helpless, as not being the smartest animal in God's kingdom, and for good reason. And yet, when you look at God's word, when you study God's word, when you read it, you realize that the Lord often uses the image of sheep to describe you and me, his people, his chosen children. And he often uses the image of the good shepherd to describe himself. And with this being Good Shepherd Sunday, we want to look at Jesus as the one and only shepherd. The one and only shepherd who knows his sheep and whose sheep know him. This morning, we're going to close out our service with the very familiar children's hymn, I am Jesus' little lamb. Ever glad at heart I am, for my shepherd gently guides me, knows my needs and well provides me, loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. And yes, Jesus calls us by our name. Those words remind us of the very comfort and reassuring truth to know that our Lord Jesus is our shepherd. The one and only shepherd who does love us each and every day. Our shepherd who knows us by name. And knowing us by name means more than just calling us, hey, John, hey, Joe, or Jane, or Sally, or whatever our name might be. It means so much more than just that. Knowing us by name means that our Lord Jesus knows us personally, individually, intimately, so intimately that he knows the exact number of hairs on the top of our heads. And not one hair falls to the ground without his knowing it. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He knows all of our needs. And as our loving shepherd, he provides us with all those needs. And why does he do it? Why does he care so much about us and for us? It's because we belong to him. He is our shepherd the one and only shepherd that we are to follow. He's not the hired hand who doesn't have a vested interest in us. 
No, he is our shepherd who redeemed us, who purchased us to be his own. As the prophet Isaiah proclaimed, saying, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Yes, we are the Lord's. We belong to him. We belong to him because he purchased us, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood. He purchased us with his blood so that we would belong to him. Three weeks ago, it doesn't seem that, that long ago, but yet three weeks ago, we found ourselves at the foot of the cross. And there at the foot of the cross, we see the love, the incredible love that our shepherd has for us. A love so great that he poured out his blood there on the cross for you and for me so that he could redeem us, that is, buy us back, purchase us to be his own. And he did it without a second thought. He didn't double-check the figures to see, well, let's see, is it worth it? Are they worth it? No, our Lord Jesus jumped right in and put himself between us and Satan. When Satan was on the verge of devouring us, our Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, stepped in and he crushed his head. He paid the ultimate price. He willingly laid down his life for us. He did it so that his blood poured out on the cross of Calvary would be the payment the one and only payment that could redeem us from sin. And his resurrection from the grave is the guarantee that that payment for sin has been made and paid in full. You and I belong to the Lord. You and I are his sheep because he laid down his life for us. That's the love that he has for us. And because he willingly did this, You and I know that we can, and we do have life for all eternity. When I was growing up, that was a long time ago, by the way, I remember a show that was on TV that was called Let's Make a Deal, hosted by Monty Hall. And I believe the show is still being aired today with, of course, different people, but the... The idea I want to draw you to is that at the end of the show, two of the contestants were chosen to pick one out of three doors. And behind one of those doors was the grand prize, the one that everybody wanted of great value. And of course, behind the other two doors were the duds, the junk, worth nothing. So you had to pick a door of being one of the contestants. Now you think about it, the odds... One out of three weren't bad. They were pretty good. You have a pretty good chance of picking the right door, but you still had to take the chance and hope that you made the right choice. But that's not the case when it comes to the door that opens up to eternal life in heaven. There is but one door. Oh, I know that people say there are many doors. There's hundreds of doors. It doesn't matter which one you go through. They all open up to heaven. That's what they claim. But that really is not the case. There is just but one. And when it comes time to making the choice as to which door should we pick, it's not a matter of chance. It's not a stab in the dark. Let's just see if I hit the right one. It's not a roll of the dice and hopefully that comes up the right way. No, the door that opens up to eternal life is very clear and obvious. Our Lord Jesus made that abundantly clear when he told the people and his disciples, he said to them, Amen, amen, I tell you. I am the door for the sheep. Whoever enters through me will be saved. And again, just before his crucifixion, there in the upper room on Monday, Thursday evening, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. All the other doors are duds. They're empty and void. They do not open up to life, but rather to death. 
But unfortunately, they are also the doors that so many people seek to pass through because those doors appeal to the natural desires of our sinful heart. They appeal to our natural inclination to believe and think that we are the ones who have to be the, the achievers, the ones by, through whom we can gain eternal life by what we do. And that's appealing to our sinful heart. And so we seek to pass through those doors. But they are not the door that opens up to your life. They're the door that opens up to death. For it is only through Christ alone do we find the door that opens up to heaven. Jesus is not one of many doors. He's not one of many shepherds. He is the shepherd. The one and only shepherd. The only one who laid down his life for you and for me and for all people. And because he is the one and only he also gives us a warning, a warning that we need to take to heart and truly listen to. And that warning is this, is that there are many who are going to come dressed in sheep's clothing. They're going to appeal as if they are the shepherd, the one to follow. But inside, there are ravenous wolves. This is what Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount. He says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. You see, they only come to kill and destroy. For they lead the sheep not to the good shepherd, but away from him. Only the good shepherd has come so that you and I can have life to the full. And through him, we do. Satan and his minions, the world, our own sinful flesh, will never give up attacking us. They will always persist in their efforts to try and to lead us away from the shepherd. And it is because of precisely that reason that Martin Luther said this. He wrote, If you knew how many fiery darts the devil were shooting at you, you would run to the sacrament of the altar. That is the Lord's Supper. Every chance you got. As the wolves surround us, as they seek to devour us, as they seek to rip from our souls the assurance of God's love and, and forgiveness, there is only one place we can flee to. There is only one to whom we can turn to. And that is our good shepherd who has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. That table adorned with the food of Christ's body and blood is the Lord's Supper. There at the Lord's altar, our good shepherd calls us by name to come to him and to hear his loving words calming our troubled hearts with the promise of forgiveness as we partake of that uplifting food of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Our good shepherd will not leave us he will not abandon us. But as he promises, as David wrote in that beautiful Psalm 23, he says, he is the one who will lead us to the quiet, still waters of his word. He is also the one that when it comes time to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you and I have nothing to fear because it is he, our good shepherd, who will lead us through that valley so that we can dwell in his house for all eternity. That's his promise. His sheep know this. You and I know this. We know that he is the good shepherd, the one and only shepherd who loves us so much that he willingly laid down his life for us. No other shepherd has done that. Only Christ our Lord. And may we never lose heart but always find comfort and strength in knowing that our Lord Jesus is our good shepherd, the one and only shepherd who has called us by name to be his own. Amen. Let's join together and confess our faith in our good shepherd with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll bow our heads in prayer. O Lord Jesus, our risen Savior, what comfort, what peace, what joy brings to our hearts to know that you are our good shepherd, the one and only shepherd we are to follow, the one and only shepherd who laid down his life for us, your sheep. It was your great love for us sinners who were lost and strained that moved you to come into this world to live, to die, and to rise again that we might have the life that does not end. O Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, we owe you heartfelt thanks and praise and our continual love and devotion for all that you have done and still do to ensure our earthly and eternal welfare. It is true that like sheep we often stray. We look for beyond, well, the green pasture of your word and think that there are things better and more desirable. And so we wander off in pursuit of those things, following the inclinations of our sinful heart. And what we discover is that they do not lead to life, but really to death. But we are always thankful, dear Lord, that as our shepherd, you do not leave us to stray, but you reach out and bring us back into your fold, giving to us the comfort and the assurance of your love and forgiveness. And that is the joy that we have when we are able to partake of your blessed sacrament of Holy Communion. For there we receive the very body and blood that was given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins, to strengthen our faith, to assure us of the love that you always have for us. O oh Lord, keep us in your grace and ever watch over us until that time comes when we will have to walk through the valley of death itself. We need not fear, for you, O oh Lord, will lead us. You will guide and direct us until you bring us to your eternal home in heaven where we will dwell with you for all eternity. And so, dear Lord, we give thanks and praise to you as our shepherd, our loving shepherd. And we now join together in your prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close now by singing, I am Jesus, little lamb. Thank you.
Again, good morning to you. I hope you are doing well and God's blessings upon you. Again, I want to thank the Natsis family for their beautiful song and opening in our service. It's amazing what technology can do. Don't ask me how Claire did it, but I truly play, uh, appreciate the fact that she was able to put all those pieces together to make one song. That's tremendous. Maybe I should ask her to dub me in and, and I could sing a solo with using Jim's voice or something. Who knows? Maybe next time. Anyways, God's blessings to you. Um, uh, just a word of encouragement. Uh, this coming week, the Board of Deacons is going to be meeting and start discussing how we can maybe start opening up uh, again our church in the sanctuary for worship services and keeping in guidance with the uh, governor's uh, stay home, social distancing orders, and so forth. Uh, so we will be looking at when we have that opportunity, we'll have things in place so that you will be able to join us here in God's house uh, in giving praise to him, but at the same time, still being safe and, and following those guidelines. In the meantime, God's blessings. Be safe. Thank you.